Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 6.1, number 13. And here we were asked to look at um, some previous problems and answer a question about um, which forest was going to have the greater number of trees. So the two population models that we were looking at, we were looking at forest A, where they gave us this exponential model of 115 times 1.025 raised to the t power. So it's exponential because the variable is over there or is up in the exponent. All right, and then they gave us, we'll, we'll compare this to forest B, all right, which was 82 times 1.029 to the t. So the first question we were asked was which number of trees will have the great, or which forest, excuse me, will have the greater number of trees in the long run. So let's compare a couple of numbers. So initially, forest A had 115 trees and forest B had 82. So that's where you see me saying initially forest A is winning because they have 115 trees compared to the 82 trees initially starting in forest B. But the, the key piece that we want to look at here is the base, right? So if we look at the base of forest A versus the base for the exponential model in forest B, you can see that this base is larger, all right? So what this is actually saying is forest B is growing, oops, that's how you spell is, is growing at 2.9% per year. And I say 2.9% because, again, remember, equilibrium would be if this base was 1. But this base, if I really want to parse it out, this base is the number 1 plus 0 0.029. And that's the decimal equivalent of 2.9%. Now, forest A is growing at a slower rate. So forest A grows at about, not even about, but at about, I keep saying at about, at 2.5% per year. All right, and so you can see that forest B has the higher growth rate. So even though it starts with fewer initial trees, it will overtake forest A. So in terms of long run, that's why you see me saying forest B is going to overtake forest A. And we could, if we, if we had, if we wanted to, we could graph these. If we got the right window, let me just sketch a really, really fake graph right now. All right, so let's put x against, oops, well, I guess technically t. So let's pretend, oops, we'll put an 82 here and a 115 here. So initially, forest A is growing, actually, let me do a different color so we can see it. Forest A is growing something, and this is a really bad sketch like that, okay? And then forest B, I'll put it in darker green. It starts at 82, but at some point, wow, that is terrible. <laughs> At some point, it's going to overtake forest A. So again, this would have been B here, and this one would have been A. So though, even though initially, even though initially forest A was higher, eventually forest B became higher because of that higher growth rate. And and things that can affect these models, right? Because these are our two models. We have one for forest A and one for forest B. Natural disasters can affect. Um, these models. So I, I said, well, maybe um, let's think about the boar infestation that happened in Colorado or the things that we've really been experiencing here in California, right? Our fires have taken effect the last couple of years, and that would, that would definitely put a kink in all of these exponential models we've had. Um, California has also gone through some drought. Um, and, and right now, not that it really affects the trees, but as I'm filming this or screencasting this, we're dealing with the corona or COVID-19. So all of those are affecting, not again, not the forest rate, but if we were taking a look at folks getting sick, um, that those, those epidemics are, are affecting those models. All right, so there is number 13, and I will see you a little later. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.